Praise the Lord. You may take your seats, church. Are you blessed this morning? We have an awesome worship team. Come on, let's give them a mighty shout of praise in our house this morning. Welcome to our worship team. MFC is on fire this morning. I believe that with all my heart. Thank you. I want to thank Pastor Dan. Pastor Dan, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share God's precious word on this platform this morning. It's indeed a privilege and an honor to stand here and share God's word this morning with God's people this morning. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, church, I am partying with the words. I want to tell you this morning that a gospel that is not preached is no gospel at all. How are you hearing me this morning, church? A gospel that is not preached is no gospel at all. You know, when God did miracles, it means that people are ready to give their lives to Jesus Christ. This morning, I'm going to preach to you a message that I call, are you, a fan, are you a fan or a follower? Are you a fan or a follower? The Bible says in Matthew 25 verse 1, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. My friends, I don't know where you come from. I don't know your social standard. I don't know your background. But I want to tell you this morning that we're living in an hour that is so close to the return of Jesus Christ. I want to tell you this coming an hour where Jesus said it shall be darkness where no man shall walk. I want to tell you that it's midnight spiritually. It's midnight politically. It's midnight economically. We are on the doorsteps to the return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. I believe that the Lord has destined this move of God that he might rescue men and women from the guilt of hell. I thank God for every healing and every miracle. But what the greatest miracle is, is when a man or a woman bows the knees to Jesus Christ. You know, when the Lord gave me this message, are they a fan? Or are they a follower? There's some here this morning that you are a fan of Jesus. You're a fan of Jesus Christ. How are people telling me I'm a Christian with a bottle of beer in their hand? I was in a supermarket just the other day talking to a young man. He had none of the signs of a Christian. Nothing in his life echoed the presence of God. There's some, I like some of the disciples of the Bible. If you read from John 6, 63, Jesus said, it's the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirits and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who the people were that did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless he has been granted to him by my father. Now I want you to hear this church. Every young man, every young woman, every old man, every old woman, hear this message this morning. Jesus, the Bible says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Many of those that were close to Jesus, they watched him do the miracles. They watched him set the captive free. But 
there came a time in their lives where the price was just too much. They were a fan, but they were never a follower. I want to ask you a question this morning. You may love church, you may love the presence, but are you a fan or are you truly a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ? Are you willing to go no matter where he asks you to go? Are you willing to lay down your plans and all that you have and your dreams at the feet of Jesus Christ this morning? You see, my friends, those people that were around Jesus, they were close enough to see the good stuff. They were close enough to see the miracle and the power. But when it got tough in that moment, in that moment where the word pierced their hearts, they suddenly stepped aside from the Son of God. I see Christians, they want to be in church, but they don't want to pay the price. The minute criticism begins, the minute how begins to accuse, you don't see them anymore. They are gone. They were a fan of church, but they were never a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Matthew 15, verse 8, He said, These people draw near to me with their mouths. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me from me. My friends, when Jesus looks at you this morning, when he looks past your nice clothes, your shoes, the smile on your face, when he looks into your heart, does he see a man who is a true follower after Jesus? Because my friends, you can come here, you can sing the songs, you can wave your hand, you can dance about, but your heart is far from Jesus. Are you a fan or a follower? I want to ask you a question this morning. Do you know him, young people? Do you know Jesus? I want to tell you this morning, some of you are playing around with things and the things of this world, and you have no idea that the chains of hell are wrapping the chains of bondage around your life. I said this to many people, and I'm going to tell you this this morning. Don't dance with the devil. He will take you under, my friend. I want to tell you that we live in an hour that just being a fan of Jesus will cut the mustard. You're not going to make it, my friend. There's coming an hour where God will pour out his glory. But the darkness in this world will be so dark that just being a fan of Jesus will never make it through the night hour. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Half of them do not have enough oil in the lamp to make it to the night. They carry the name of Jesus, but their hearts were far from him. There's a scripture in the gospel. Every time I read it, oh my heart. There's an hour where men will say, Jesus, didn't we cast out devils in your name? The Bible says Jesus would look with the eyes of fire. His glory will pierce your heart and he will say, go from me. I never knew you. Go from me. I never knew you. I want to talk about Peter. I want to talk about a bold disciple, Peter. The disciple whom Jesus asked the question, whom did the crowd say that I am? He was the one that had the revelation that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Some of you here this morning, you are on fire for God. You are burning for God. You do whatever Jesus has told you to do. You are willing to lay down your life. You are willing to do the things that God required of you. This morning, you're dead. There's no fire in you. There's no passion in you. You're the bondage to sin to the things of this world. See, the Bible says that Jesus said to Peter, Peter, Satan asks that he 
may suffer you as wheat. Those disciples that walk with Jesus, that have seen the miracles, this bold disciple suddenly Satan longed to take him out. I want to tell those of you, some of you had our lives. Some of you maybe not known the love of a father. Some of you maybe been abused. Satan, from the moment you entered into this world, sought to sift you, to cripple you, to wrap you in pain and bitterness. See, church, you can see that God has a plan for your life. See, the Bible says, when Jesus was being led to the cross, when the Son of God was about to take on the sins of the world, when he was about to hang on the cross, beaten so badly that he was unrecognizable, they opened up his back until the Bible says that his back was like a plowed field. I want to tell you this this morning, church. Jesus wasn't a fan of you. He wasn't a fan of you. He was a lover of your soul. When it was his moment to step up there for the pledge of the place for you, he never backed down, he never played an island, he stepped up there and faced hell head on. When Jesus was going to stand before Pilate, the Bible says that Peter, this man, this disciple was going to be a follower of Jesus. The Bible says that he so distanced himself from Christ that he was warming himself by the fire. My friends, some of you were on fire for God. You had a passion for souls. Then Satan began to draw you that you might warm yourself by the fires of this world. You see, my friends, Satan will know you until you don't see Jesus anymore. Until you are warming yourself by the fire and suddenly he will test you. Wasn't you that man? Wasn't you that follower of Christ? The Bible says, that Peter, this man who said, bid me to come, he so distanced himself from Jesus that he denied Christ. My friends, I don't know where you are this morning, but I know that I got a lifeline. There's some of you here that have been warming yourself. Jesus stands and knocking at the door. The hour is late. Don't play. Don't gamble with your soul. Peter denies Christ. But what I loved, I know when Jesus hung on the cross, I know when the blood took from his side, when the Father turned his face, in that moment when Jesus hung there, I know that he saw Peter. And I know when Peter, he know knew that Peter denied him. But what I know, as that blood took from his side. And that blood took from his side. He knew not what Peter was, but what he would become. He knew that this man would one day become a follower who would lay down his life for the kingdom of God. See my friends. What I love is Jesus come to find. He died and he rose again. The Bible says that he even went down to Hades. He went down to hell. He took the keys of death and hell and rose victorious. But what I love is the Lamb of God. He came looking for Peter. He wouldn't leave him. He knew that this man would one day become his follower. A disciple who will have a passion to preach Pentecost. See this morning, church, God is calling those back to the passion, back to the call. But what 
what I love is what Jesus said to Peter. Jesus said to him, Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? What he was really trying to say, Peter, are you a fan? You might wear the teacher, you might sing this song, but is your heart rendered unto me? Jesus used the word called agape. It means a very special and deep kind of love. It means that you love with all your heart. My friends, how long are you going to run away from God? How long are you going to run away from the Savior? Young people, one day my friend Shane that I went to school many years ago, he had an argument with his dad. He went into his drawer, he took some money, and he went to a drug dealer not far from where I stayed. He told the man, I give me some drugs. The man gave him the drugs. He said, I don't want to go home, I want to sleep in your house. The man said, you can't sleep in my house, but you can sleep in my car. My friend took the drugs, went into the car. The next morning the man came out, he looked to the window of the car. My friend has choked to death. He has swallowed his own vomit. Gone! Sipped as wheat. Swept into eternity. Gone in the blink of an eye. What I'm telling you this morning, young people, don't mess with the devil. He will take you under. Sons, he will run a race around you. Daughters, he will make you look like you don't know what day it is. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. See, Peter looked at the eyes of Jesus and he said, Lord, you know I'm filial of you. That means you know I like you. You know I'm a fan. But Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? I want to ask you that question this morning. Some of you may just have to lay down those friends that you've been keeping. Some of those that tell, tell you, you don't need this stuff. You don't need to be in this church. There are people who are swinging in your ears that's telling you, if God wants to move, he will move in the other church. And while your love goes cold, the enemy laughs over you. Jesus looked at Peter and he looked in the eyes and he said, Peter, do you like me? Do you like me? My friends, you may be in church for a very long time. Me, you may be looking at me and telling me he's just wasting his time. But I'm telling you this morning, church, I'm not asking you to listen to my words. I'm asking you to listen into the presence of God and look into your life and ask yourself, am I on fire? Am I burning with the gospel? Or am I a fan? Or am I a disciple and follower of Jesus Christ? Let me tell you, friends, you may be asking God for miracles in your life. But God this morning is asking you this morning, will you lay down your life and let me breathe upon you again? You know, Jesus said, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and let him follow me. Whoever desires to save his life, he will lose it. My friends, you may be trying to hold on to the things that you lean upon your life, but you don't realize that you lose your soul in the process. Let go. Let go. Let Jesus.
Jesus breathe in your life. What I love about Peter is when Pentecost hits, the fire of God falls on him. If you read, if you read the books of Book of Acts, this man that denied Christ, this man that was a fan, suddenly had an encounter with the fire of the Holy Ghost. The power of God invaded his life. And suddenly this man changed from a fan into a disciple of Jesus Christ. What a love, church. You see, my friends, it wasn't too late. It wasn't too late. The power of God came right on time. This power of God has been released right on time. Are you a fan or a follower? My friends, what's your price? What has Satan offered you that you took it hook, line, and sinker? What has he offered you that has drawn you to warm yourself against the fires of this world? Is it a man? Is it a woman? Is it a business deal? But Jesus, I know that is deceitful. I know that is corrupt. But Jesus, I need that money. I need that money. And you know I'll give it to the kingdom. My friends, that is filthy money that will damage your soul. Stop warming your hands with what the enemy will give you. Jesus shall supply all of your needs. I love Peter. The fan that became a follower. Then Peter said to them, repent. Every, every pen, and let everyone be baptized into the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, my friends, the Bible says that God will always strive with you. He will always strive with you. He will always strive with your rebellion. One day, you're going to be asked to give an account of what you did with the offer that God has made you. My friend, I'm not the most intelligent man on the tree, but I've got enough sense to say this. Don't fight with God. Don't fight with God. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. For whom the Son set free is free. Indeed. Come on, give Jesus a mighty praise offering in the house of sin. Stand up to your feet this morning. Everybody, stand to your feet. Everybody around this place, stand to your feet this morning. My friends, I've spent the last half hour, half an hour trying to explain you what Peter said in three lines. Bow your knees. He will wash you. He will cleanse you. He will set you on fire. You'll never be the same. You'll never walk the same. You will be baptized in the fire and Holy Ghost. Are you a fan or a follower? Are you a fan or a follower? I'm going to leave you this morning to answer that question. Thank you, Church. Thank you, Pastor Ben. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the ministry of the word. Just pray that the Lord will just bless his channel and use him in the days that lie ahead. Honestly, seriously, are you a fan or a follower? You can say, I'll follow you, Lord, wherever you go. You lead. Let him lead. Father, we thank you for the ministry of the word. Even as it has come so forcefully, may we readily ponder over every aspect. And may we do some straightening of God that will help us to become more fervent in our worship with you. It is no more time for talkers. It is time for walkers. May we walk in your way, walk in the light. 
May we do it right, O oh God. Help us in that regard. And now may the grace of God, the love of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the sweet fellowship of the blessed Holy Spirit remain with each one of us today, always, even till Jesus comes and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.